Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Talk Tuesday. Today is the very last day of April for us here in Australia. But I know for Peggy from the USA, you've still got to um, enjoy April the 30th. So tomorrow is May the 1st and um, we hope that yes, a few more people will join us. If not, hopefully you're listening to the recording. I'm Anne Merchant. I teach in a small country school in Western Victoria, Australia. Um, I teach ICT from grade 3 right through to year 12. I have years 9 and 10 as an elective this year and I think that's where I started to get really interested in student engagement. What does engage students? Because you can see how easily they'll get lost in their own thought processes, be distracted with their mobile devices or with me on the computers they'll quickly flick on and off the internet and be in sites where they want to be rather than where I would like them to be. So last week we looked at um, some of the tools that engage students and I went through Google Documents and I wanted to spend a bit of time talking about some things I learnt in the week. Um, I find that if my students can all have a voice, if they all have a chance to write things together, um, they are really engaged. They love to all be able to take part, participate, share their knowledge, ask questions, etc. So during the week, I don't know if you've seen this, Peggy, and let me grab the URL. I noticed a blog post that allows you uh, to add voice to a Google document. So I'm going to drop the link in the chat. And I thought perhaps for some students, maybe those with disabilities, um, or maybe even for some of my students that want to talk faster than they can write, or for me when I'm correcting student work, and if they've done it in Google Docs, I could actually talk the comments through. So Peggy, did you get, have you actually looked at that at all? Yes, I think it would be great for teacher feedback to students. I don't know how it would work if you're all trying to do it in simultaneous time. But that's what I do find engages my students too. They love to learn new things. They love to experiment. Um, so I thought maybe with one of my smaller classes, we might have a go at that and just see how it works and give you feedback on it. So Joe, last week we got some examples of um, collaborative Google documents that have been set up both by students and perhaps for professional development, etc. Um, I, lo I love crowdsourcing. I think that technology has now enabled us to source information from the crowd. And that's not just um, the upper level of leadership in both the department or in schools, etc. Those of us who are on the lowest level can now share our knowledge, add to documents and we can create this collective intelligence and I think we're going to see more and more of that all the time. And that's why I love these more informal um, webinars because we all have a chance to participate, ask questions and etc. With that Google Voice, I'm not sure how it's recorded and embedded in the Google Doc. I wasn't sure that it comes up like as a side comment, but I think it would have to be embedded inside it. That might be something for us to play with. Uh, perhaps next week we all work on it together and see if we can get it to work. However, last night, just while I was writing up a bit of them or doing the, the slides for this presentation, I don't know if you know Meg Demanda. I'll just put her Twitter ID in the chat. She actually uh, put out a tweet just when I was doing all this to say, here's a document that I'm working on in Google Docs to crowd search, source. And she's pinged three people. So she's got my name, at Mercha, my Twitter ID, and she's got the connected teacher in Heiku he deck. So I'm just going to pull up this document and show you what she was trying to do. So she's about to do a presentation. Now she runs her own business now. She was about to do a presentation um, on mobile devices and using them for, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to get this right. I might try and minimise my window so I can fit it in. Can you see my screen okay? 
Uh, hang on, what have I done? Can you see the screen? So she is doing a presentation. How can you do presentations with mobile devices? So I've seen people say it's too hard to work to either hook up a desktop, take a laptop and hook it up. But if you've got your iPad, your iPhone, your smartphone, smart pad or whatever they're called, um, you can actually uh, do presentations with that. So while I was working on the document, so with Amanda, so she crowdsourced ideas. She's going to put um, Evernote images in, use Google Drive, etc. And she's then got some of the apps that can be used. And this was crowdsourced too. So they weren't all just Amanda's ideas. Some were mine, some were other people's. But these are some of the apps, etc., that you can use to do presentations. Now, I hope I'm not going to do this fast because I'm going to scroll fast in a minute. But then also to allow interactive um, participation by the audience. So there's things like Nearpad, Idea, Flight, etc. I'm going to still keep going down. Um, then she's got all the different hardware that you might use, need to be able to do your presentations. And then some of the tools that might be used for the presenter. So there's Keynote, there's Power Presenter, Keynote Remote. Um, etc. And then to give feedback at the end of the presentation, which I think is important. So there were lots of suggestions there, some of the tools that could be used there. So crowdsourcing pulls in that intelligent um, brain or collective intelligence, which we should be doing more and more with our students because they all have their own experiences, especially with technology. They are using it all the time and they often have great ideas for use in learning. Uh, or to support the learning that we're doing. I'm just going to flick to this Google Doc because this is one that I quickly showed last week. This was crowdsourced as well. So I tweeted for suggestions for apps for our students to have while they were in Melbourne on work experience because many of them have never been to the big city before or if they have, they certainly haven't stayed and they never caught public transport or rarely by themselves. So I got all these wonderful suggestions from lots of people and I still don't know who many of them were but they talked about getting the Mikey card app because in Victoria we need a card now. We can't buy tickets on our public transport. There was tram tracker, there were Google Maps, even a public toilet map for students that might quickly need one. A trip advisor for reviews, maps, etc. Wi-Fi finder, the weather, so the kids could look up and see what they needed to wear for the day. They, a, they suggest a movie, TV guide, apps, eating and money. Now, our students are not terribly good with budgeting uh, because they really don't have to do a lot of that. They don't know the eateries. They want a cheap places to eat. So there are lots of suggestions for apps there. Um, yeah, I'll give that to you, Peggy. Uh, let me just find it and I'll drop it in. So this is the one that Megan was crowd sourcing. Uh, I'm just going to now flip you to another one because I'd love to show you some of the things that have been done. Oh, that's ours. Wait a minute, I've still got to grab one more. I also noticed that in Chicago they had an ed camp um, and they did a smackdown. So I'll just drop this in the chat. So they've suggested different apps that might be used in learning. So they're not specifically for students but rather perhaps the teachers to use in the classroom. So if I pull that up and share it uh, with you, we'll have a quick look at this. So, oh, oh, sorry, that's going to be blocked here, so I'll forget that. If you guys can get into that one uh, through the chat, you'll see that various teachers at a Chicago uh, boot camp suggest a lot of different apps, and some of those I hadn't heard before. I'm now going to share with you the one that we're going to use ourselves to crowdsource. I'm going to drop it in the chat. So that's the one that we're going to add to today. But another one that I thought was great is Linux or Linode. Do you use that, Peggy? Someone suggested it last week. So when it loads, and hopefully it does, I'll drop it in here. Because Denise uh, Krebs, who, sorry, that's not the right address for that one. She asked for people to support her um, with 
arguments for uh, blogging reasons to blog, reasons to use Twitter, and something else. And that's not showing up here, so I'm not quite sure why. Um, so I don't know if you two can go into that Linux link and see there's some absolutely marvellous um, suggestions and reasons for support for using those web 2.0 tools. So that was a different tool that was used for crowdsourcing support and opinion. Right, so I'm going to put it on our document. I'm going to go back and just stop the app sharing for a minute and see what tools we know of and hopefully what tools we might be able to share. Uh, Joe and Peggy, did you have time to put any of those other documents? And if so, Peggy first, do you have any comments on them? <coughs> Are you wanting us to comment on the ones that you've just shared? If you can first, and then if you've got some to share, I think it's great to be able to see the different methods and ways that people do it. So yeah, Peggy, I'm the ones we shared first. <laughs> so uh, the idea is that we're looking for uh, different ways that we can share uh, brainstorming or, or ideas for teaching that are actually crowdsourced so multiple people can contribute to the ideas at the same time or in the same time frame. Is that what you're thinking? Oh, I just wanted what your thoughts were on crowdsourcing and the documents that we looked at first. Um, well, I love you... those. <clears throat> Um, I, is Denise the one of the organizers of the uh, Genius Hour Wiki Space? Do you know? No, I'm not sure. I met Denise through a blogging challenge, so I'll have to Google her while you're talking. Okay. So you have a look. I'll go back and check that. Um, I use Google Docs all the time. I also use Wiki Spaces a lot for uh, collaborating on ideas because it's so easy to to create a um, spreadsheet within uh, Wiki Spaces and also in in Google Docs for people to contribute their ideas. Uh, I know I've been involved in a lot of sessions where they've asked us um, to complete a form like right on the spot in the middle of their presentation and then they would bring up the results from the Google form in the spreadsheet to share with all of us. Um, I think those are those are great tools and they're the ones I use the most. I've used Linowit, I've used um, Wallwisher, a number of different brainstorming tools, lots of mind mapping kinds of things. Um, Pearl Trees is another one that uh, uh, Shelly Terrell uses a lot for sharing resources about a topic. And um, I think that you can collaborate on that one. So that will be just a few to, uh, for us to continue talking about. And Joe, what about you? Have you ever crowdsourced with anyone or tapped into anyone's crowdsourcing? Or what is your opinion on what you've seen here so far? Um, no, I haven't really, except um, for when I've participated in um, Joe Hart's uh, webinars, um, you know, quite often we'll contribute um, programs that we know about and this sort of thing. So that's a, that's a form of crowdsourcing, I would imagine. Um, uh, but I haven't done it in this way. I haven't done it via the, the Google Docs. Um, uh, it looks really good and really useful. Um, and um, I have used the Linoid and the Wall Wisher. Um, and yes. Oh, okay. So we just also thanks, Joe. Um, I think especially for um, bright students. They would love to use those collaborative type documents and they don't have to be within your own classroom walls. They can be collaborating like we are going to be virtually across the oceans, etc. Um, I was also going to show you, this was just before we move on, uh, let me grab it and I'm going to share my screen. 
One of the teachers that I'm in a group with said she's just been looking at the Earth Day context. So teachers must have put their um, lesson plans up on Pinterest. I think this is what has happened because I've only just got that uh, message. And then people can then have a look at all those different uh, lesson plans or ideas or projects um, from that one board. So Pinterest is another very, very popular. Uh, oh, these are just all different ideas it looks like for Earth Day, is that? I don't know, your lesson plan. So I don't know if anyone's used Pinterest, but I love the fact that it sort of brings up um, very quickly the websites in that nice, neat format, uh, with pictures, etc. Yeah, it's a nice one. So that also, in a way, is a crowdsourced resource for people. Okay, let's go back to our whiteboard. And what I'd love to do is... Um, just a minute. Can we quickly list some tools that you know are for student engagement? Again, I'm sorry, Peggy, I'm not going to do this last time. Um, but Jo may have some different ideas. And then I thought we'd have a look and see if any of us can share any of them. So Jo, at least you've used Blackboard Collaborate before, haven't you? So you just pick up the text tool, which is there, um, and then click on the board. Uh, I don't know if you can collaborate. Can you just suggest pins? So obviously someone's created that board with all the different lesson plans that they've gathered. So yes, it's probably not collaborative crowdsourcing. It's you going off to find what the crowd has already done. I think you're right, Peggy. Okay, so can we just jot down two or three tools that we know for student engagement? Uh, yeah, I like Scoop It too. There's probably lots and lots of tools. Sometimes there's just too many to keep up with. So if we just give ourselves a minute, just write on the board now. Um, just some ideas that you know of for student engagement, so we may have already mentioned them. Uh, they might be different. And then we'll see what we can share. Okay, now do we need to explain any of those or would anyone like to talk to them? I know that we just get my pointer back. Um, Flickr group photos, that's a good one. Uh, I know a lot of students in my class, the senior end or secondary end, love taking photos and they work with photos a lot. In fact, I think the use of images is going to become more pronounced um, in time. Uh, Jo, do you want to talk about a couple of the ones that you put up there um, and just explain what that tool looks like? Um, I'll, I'll find a link for, for VoiceThread, um, but you know, blogs is very useful in the way of sharing uh, by via the comment, just that sort of thing. Um, and then mind mapping in a cooperative way um, via, well, Blackboard or um, similar um, program to that. And Peggy? You know, it's one leads to another, to another, to another. My mind is just spinning here. I put the Flickr photo groups up there because um, I've been involved in several that I have just loved. Um, and did you ever participate, or Joe, did either of you ever participate in the 365-day photo projects on Flickr? Maybe you haven't. Um, it was an idea that was um, uh, put forward to help all of us become better photographers, meaning better observers of things. And so the challenge was to take one new picture every day and to post it to this group. Um, what we ended up with was an incredible 
a compilation of crowdsourced photos that were all original and all shared as um, Creative Commons so that they could actually be used in classrooms for any kind of project that required images. And um, that was a really fun project. Another one that I really like is one that I think was maybe started by Dean Chiresky. And it was uh, quotes for leadership and change. And what he was encouraging people to do was to take any photo that they had, that obviously an original one, and to add a quote to it. So if you're in a webinar and you hear somebody say something that really impresses you, you would take that quote and add it to an image and then upload it to this site. And it is now a wonderful collection of quotes with images. So they are great for um, professional development presentations or webinars or even creative writing prompts for students. It's it's really neat. I I when I saw it, I thought that it would be a great thing for students to do as a project. It would inspire them to either start with a quote and then add a picture or take a picture that they think might represent that quote or the reverse take a picture, start with that picture, and then look for a quote that might go with it. It could be famous people, quotes, or, you know, things my mother always said to me, or just anything like that. So, you know, I think that there are lots of possibilities for it. I will <clears throat> see if I can grab that link for uh, both of those Flickr groups, because I think you would enjoy taking a look at them. Peggy, is there any chance you could share your screen and share them with us um, as well as share the link? And hello, Lucy, lovely to have you. Sure, I can do that. Could someone else go ahead and share and I have to find the links. Okay, well, I will share some. And Lucy, I don't know if you've got any ideas of tools that you like using or whether you're just here to learn. But if you do have any ideas while I'm talking, it's great. If you could just click on the text tool, which is way over on the left hand side, um, sort of next to our list of names, click on the text tool, then you click on the whiteboard and you can add your ideas there. My students love using Skype. There's something about video conferencing, as long as uh, the people at the other end are doing a reasonable job at speaking um, clearly, etc. Especially in small groups, they'd love to be able to talk. Um, and communicate with students from other countries. Um, my Australian students love American students to talk to because they both speak English, but the time zone's not good for us. So we will often link up with schools in Asia where language is a real problem, but they are forced to communicate with their body language, text, chat, uh, and you know also oral communication as well. But one of my favourites has always been what was called the Wisher but it's now called um, Padlet and so it's like a sticky wall. So Joe or Lucy, do you know that one? Can you just put yes or no in the chat? Because I find that something very simple, easy and quick to set up and uh, students, you can add images, URLs, uh, embed little videos, etc. Yeah, so it's wall wishes. So some of the tools that I find engage students are the oldie goldies, they've just been around for a long time. Another one that I started to use was that channel chat. Um, I'll get the proper URL for you in the chat. So this is like a back channel which I can uh, create uh, a channel, share the link with my students and then they can actually add to the chat. So while we're talking or discussing or they've got Anything they can actually add to it, like um, links that they know of, questions, things they don't understand, uh, they can put it in that back channel. So we've used that effectively. So that's the, this is a fairly new tool, I think. So my grade three, four students who are uh, 10, 9, 10 years old, we created a back channel with students in Indonesia. 
So the students over there, my students, they've taken turns to put a question up, then everybody would answer it. So they'd say like, what, what is your favourite subject? Uh, so one student would put that in the chat and then everybody would see it coming up. But we did, we had it on a whiteboard. So when I go down to the grade three four room, they've got an electronic whiteboard. But each student had their own device in my class, so I was lucky. They had a little netbook. And the students in Indonesia were two to a computer. So they all had a voice. The students in Indonesia would share that computer, but they'd each type the answer to their question. And that was, the kids loved that. They sat there for over 50 minutes just asking questions, reading the answers, and then it led to more teachable moments because some of the favourite foods were things we'd never heard of and probably the same for Indonesia. So we were able to go and search for them later. So there's a free version in that back channel chat. Then you can pay for a premium version which gives you even greater um, privileges and things to do. Ah, oh, wonderful to have you Lucy then. So hopefully you've got some stuff for us. If not, uh, hopefully we can share with you. Peggy, how did you go with Flickr and the group? Well, I found them both. Would you like me to screen share? What does everybody think? A tick or a yes or a smile? <laughs> I would love to see them, Peggy. Okay, we'll give we it a want. try and hopefully it won't crash everyone. Um, <laughs> I'm going to... Okay. I have two browsers open right now because I had something <laughs> I wanted to share and I needed to share it in Safari, so I'm the one pushing the bandwidth tonight. Okay, this so one's while Peggy, and Peggy, while you're doing that, uh, Lucy, I don't know if you're on a laptop or a wireless device, but if you are, you need to go up to, uh, if you're on a PC, that is, you've got to edit, look for preferences, and scroll down until you see connection and pull back your connection speed. And if you're on a Mac, uh, Peggy, I think you go to Blackboard and somewhere there there's the option to pull back the speed. Oh, I am sorry, Peggy, here. Give me a minute and let your moderator. There you go. So Lucy, Peggy's about to share her computer with us. Peggy's actually from America, so it's still Monday for her. And we're going to look at Flickr, which is a, a photo uh, gallery site where you can upload photos and share them. So uh, we were just listening to some of the groups that Peggy's uh, been involved in. How you going, Peggy? Is it working? It is really loading slow. I'm sorry. You'll have to let me know when you can see it. And maybe while it's loading, Joe and Lucy, do you have a Flickr account? Have you heard of Flickr? Can you see it yet? Yes, I can, Peggy. Joe, Lucy, give us a smile when you can see it. All right. Well, well, we'll go ahead then, um, and I'll drop the link in the in the chat as soon as I get out of application sharing. There are two sites I wanted to share with you. This is the 365 photo sh um, site, and I actually participated in it like three years ago or so, um, and I just kept the side window open just enough to show you. Um, the information about it, the the two biggest contributors um, so far have been um, Alec Carosa, uh, Alec Kuros, and Cogdog Blog, who is Alan Levine. So you may know both of those people, and um, they have contributed some really amazing pictures. But I'm going to hide that little. Um, try to hide it if it's. So you can see the pictures bigger. And like I said, this was a way for us to start becoming better 
uh, photographers, not in terms of high quality cameras and things like that, but in terms of becoming better observers and then taking pictures and sharing them with others so that now all of these photos are available on this site. Anyone can access them and use them because they're all shared with Creative Commons licensing. So it's sort of like a snapshot in everyone's life each day of the year. It's called 365 because we're supposed to take one every day of the year. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea. And you can see that banana one is really clever. And there were lots of times that people actually staged their photos to try and get it to say or show something um, in particular. So that was kind of fun. Okay, now I'm going to try to show you the other one. My ball is spinning right now. Let's see if I can get to this one. <clears throat> I'm waiting for it to come up for you. The other one I wanted to show you is the one for quotes about, um, great quotes about learning and change. Again, this is a Flickr pool. And as soon as it finishes loading, it's still um, coming up for me. What you'll see is these are all pictures that people have taken or created and then added a quotation to it. Um, they're very inspiring and I use them frequently when I want to share a message with someone. I'll just scroll down these a little bit. Some of the print I'm sure is too small for you to see, but I'm going to give you the link to these so you can go browsing through them on your own. <laughs> Some of them are just happy things, like this one says, it's called Touchdown. It says, that's my boy. Go, Jaden, go. So for them, celebrating their son's accomplishment, playing football was a big, a big thing. Um, I love the blue mouth on that one. Um, don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. I think that's really clever. So that gives you a bit of an idea about that. So I will stop sharing if I can. Um, I've got to find the, the tool somewhere. Um, and then I'll drop the links for you. Thank you, Peggy. Peggy deserves a clap for that because um, uh, it's not easy to be able to do all that sharing. Now, I'm going to quickly give us a new page because I love what Lucy's asked. Lucy, uh, I think, is a pre-service teacher. So I don't know if you've got a microphone that works. We'll get you to talk if you do in a minute. She wants ideas of lot using Flickr and images, I guess. Is that right? Um, Lucy, or are you looking for general tools that might help you with that? Can you just put that in the chat? Do you want to know how we could use the images and the 365 days or the quotes? Or are you looking for general tools? So Lucy, if you could drop that in there. And Jo, do you want to quickly talk about Chrissy and how she does those posters? Yeah, Chrissy um, is a, a teacher um, in the US and she has a lot to do with Space Camp and um, she teaches um, a particular gifted class um, and will be moving to another school also to teach, a, teach gifted students there. Um, but she makes wonderful posters for motivation, you know, for the for the staff room and for the for the classroom and things like this. And she has a, a pet hedgehog which very often features um, in the pictures. She had one the other day with um, the hedgehog all covered in pencils um, and said, look who's hogging the pencils <laughs> and this sort of thing. Uh, yeah, really amusing. Okay, so uh, Peggy, probably for your information, moat means if you teach a language other than English, 
in an English speaking school. Can we quickly take one minute and let's throw up some ideas? How can we use images and maybe a site like Flickr um, for those who teach language other than um, English? So have I made myself clear? I hope so. Okay, so Peggy, how can we actually use the images for language or the ones that are stored online? Do you want to write it on the whiteboard or do you want to talk it? Oh, it's, faster it's, faster to talk. <laughs> it's faster to talk than to type. Um, I, I know that you can use images in um, VoiceThread, as Joe was describing earlier, um, really easy. And that way students can either add a text or a voice comment to the images. So, you know, you can, you can organize them, or you can create them around themes or topics or um, favorite things, really any kind of thing that um, students might be interested in and use those then to uh, define them, to uh, find synonyms or antonyms or using them in a sentence. Those are all things they could do with those images. Um, they could um, they could certainly be story starters. You know, there's so many things that you can think of. When you look at a picture, everybody doesn't see the same thing or think the same thing. So uh, describing what you see or what it reminds you of or makes you think of, I think you could do all of those things. Have you ever uh, used the site called Picklets? P I C lits.com <clears throat> that is a terrific site take a look at it it basically it's like refrigerator magnets but it's digital and they provide you with hundreds and hundreds of pictures that you can choose from and then write poetry using their their drag and drop words so you just like a refrigerator magnet where you would move it around and change the order you can do that online and you can also create the text to go with the photo there and then you can download that new image with the words with it um, as a JPEG. So then you could upload it on a blog or uh, any place you like, really. You certainly could upload it in VoiceThread. You could upload them on a Padlet or a wall wisher, you know, for people to share what they created. That site is really fun. And since you can create your own words, you could do that in your own language. So uh, the magnets, I believe, are all English. I don't think there's another, another version of that. But since you can create your own, you could um, do that in your own language. So that's fun. Somebody else's turn. Thank you, Peggy. You've always got great ideas. Um, so Lucy, what language are you teaching? Can you share that in the chat, please? Uh, or if you've got a microphone, just click on it. Italian, okay. What I would love to see is maybe you go to Flickr and look for anyone that might have put some photos up of Italy, etc. Students would have to research where that was from and maybe um, talk to the picture in Italian so that you learn the culture and the overall country. Uh, Lucy also asked about a Boki. So, uh, uh, Peggy and uh, Joe, I don't know if you've used Bokis, but that was probably one of the very first Web 2.0 tools that I used, and it was a firm favourite because our students shared a wiki with students in New Zealand. So, we had a collaborative wiki space. We had to do introductions. So, each student created a Boki, and they spoke and recorded their voice into the Boki and then embedded the Bokki or the animated avatar into the wiki. So over the week the students could go in, listen to the introductions, listen to the different accents, etc. So Lucy, for you, for them to speak in Italian with the Bokki would be great. 
So I'm going to very quickly share that. Peggy and um, Joe, I'm sure you would have seen this one, correct? So you have to actually register for this site. I do the registering and then I can create lots of bockies within my account. So a lot of my students then come to my computer or my login and they create their bocky. So this is what it looks like, Lucy. Uh, you can choose how your bocky looks. These are Shana, this is one of my students, shows this bocky. It takes a little while to load up because it's highly got high quality um, graphics. You can play and listen to this person speaking, then it's not going to come through on your computer. They can choose to use the typing or actually talk to it. Uh, it got Anne Marie chose this Voki. So they all make their little digital characters the way they would like it to look. And then they talk to it. It lets you grab an embed code and then you grab that code and add it to your website. So does that give you... Um, oh, if you type in the other language, you can actually... I didn't know that, Joe. Do you want to talk to that one quickly? Um, yes, I'll, I'll find um, where I used this on my blog at one stage. Um, Hang on, I'm just going there now to um, to find it. Um, and I typed in. I had a go at, at speaking in French and dreadful accent. And then I typed the same thing in, and I had the cat saying it. And oh, it was really good to be able to hear the correct pronunciation of it. Um, and I'll find that, and I'll. I'll put it in for you. Thank you, Joe. So while you're doing that, Lucy, this is what it looks like when you go to edit your little bocce. So students can come in, they choose the clothes they have, the type of face, the background, etc. And then when you want to record, you click on the record with microphone. Um, and you have to allow, I don't know if this is the same as it looks on a Mac, you've got to allow that flash player. Um, close and then you can click record and you simply record your voice or message so it's recording now. I hope you can see all this on your screen. When I'm finished recording I will click stop. I, I would then save it and when you've saved you give it a name uh, so intro or something. Go OK. It's now creating that bocce recording for me. And then I think I close and then I'm able to grab this. It's lost it's obvious. It's, does anyone remember where I get the code from to embed it? Oh, it's not seen to have been. Oh, here, add code to your site. All right. So you would click on one of these and it will give you some code that you can then put on your blog or on your wiki. Okay, I'm going to get out of that and let someone else talk to it. So Joe, how'd you go? Did you find yours? And if so, do you want to share it with us on the screen? Joe, I'll go to you. So Joe, would you like to share that site with us? Uh, are you would you like to do that, please? <laughs> Sorry, I'm talking to myself here. Um, oh, would and you like? Could you, yeah. could, you uh, could you do that, please? Yeah, I'm just going in now. Thanks. And Peggy, what app did you learn about from Fly to Moon? Could you just grab the mic and tell us that while I'm loading this other site, please? <laughs> I'm trying to remember the name of the app, and I know it's on that page that I just put the link in for. It was the coolest thing, and Tony did um, a very quick, like one minute video review of what he uh, experienced that day at Slide to Learn. And one of the things he mentioned was this tool that 
he he stood there and he recorded his own face with his mouth talking and then he embedded that on top of a web page so it's like Boki but it's your own real mouth and um, it can talk to people when they come to visit your site it was really fun I will find it from that list it's on that list somewhere okay so Joe I've pulled up your site so if I, um, people will have to go into themselves because you won't hear it through mine. Or hang on, if I do this, can you tell me if you can hear what the Bocky is saying? Is this the one I need to choose, Joe? I'll just get you to tell me where, which Bocky I click on. Oh, sorry. Uh, you'll need to click on Joe's site and scroll down and find the cat. Joe, what language was that again? <laughs> I learned French at school. So Joe's got quite a few bockies on her site. Uh, quite easy um, to set up. Students love them. They do engage them. They love to make the avatar the way they would like it to look. Uh, some students are a bit shy initially about speaking into the microphone, but I always make my students do that, especially if they're um, sharing these bockies with students in uh, from other countries, because I think it's very important that we learn about the different accents, etc. Okay, we've got about two minutes left. Would you like me to show you the back channel chat? Because and we can actually create a back channel quickly and see what it looks like. Let me see, or someone else got another site they would like to look at and share. Okay, I'm going to take you to the back channel chat. So, uh, this is what it looks like. Um, it's just backchannelchat.com and I was lucky enough to get the premium uh, time, sorry, a premium account. So, when you actually log on, this is what you get. If you want to, all you've got to do is create a new back channel. So we're going to call it Tools of Engagement. Oh, sorry, I need my name there. So I just display my name. Uh, call it Tools of Engagement. And I'm going to start the room up. And then I'm going to share the link with you people. So this is the room. And I'll need to go to my email, I think, to grab the link for you people. No, I don't think I do need to. If I share this link with you now, down there, um, hopefully you can log into the room. Oops, where did I go there? Wrong one. Um, let me know if you can or can't get in. And then I thought, if you've got um, any YouTube videos or any links that you know would be useful. Ah, Joe's in. Well done. So you can see straight away, you, all, this is all students need. So you can use it with preps right through to year 12. They just click on the link that in. Um, they log in. I always ask them to log in with their first name so I know it's them, but students will be silly. And again, it's good. Um, digital citizenship, etc. Oh, okay, Peggy, if we don't go too long here, um, are you able to drop the link of that app into the chat? Now, I want each of you to go and find a little YouTube video, um, hopefully one that you know is okay, or maybe one that actually shares what, how to use one of these tools that we've uh, worked on. I'm going to find a slide share of mine. So I've just gone out the chat. So if you go to that back channel, how did you go, Lucy? Were you able to get in? Because I didn't quite 
look to see who was in that room. And Peggy, I hope you're in. Uh, so if I go to my upload, I want to show you how good it can be. So in Australia, we have um, a little German village near us, and at Christmas, uh, they decorate hay bales. Uh, so I need to grab the embed code, and I hope I can do it in here. Yep. So I click on embed, copy that. Now if I go to the back channel chat and embed it in there, you can see that it makes it become the active slide share. Hey Lucy, I can't see you or Peggy in there. Did you get oh, Peggy's in? Lucy, you need to who are you? Make sure that you click on this link in the uh, Blackboard Collaborate room. Can you see it? If you click on that, it should take you and let you go into this back channel. So now Peggy and Joe, if you can find a little YouTube video, video that you know is either educational or something, drop the link for YouTube in there and you'll see it becomes the actual active YouTube. Uh, Lucy, how are you going? I just can't see in the back channel. I'd love you to get in so you can see what it looks like. Can you um, text chat in the thing? Oh, absolutely. And you can like it. So there's little like buttons here. Now, I'm lucky I've got the premium version, but it wasn't very expensive. But if you've got the ordinary version, you can pin things, you can get information about this message. I think it's a fabulous back channel. And it's relatively new, so they're improving it all the time. How do we go? Does anyone else put stuff in? How are we going? Are you guys able to just to put a YouTube video in? And Lucy, I hope you can get in here because I still can't see you in the room. Um, I love experimenting with this with students because they find... Oops, I think I've got an error message here. I may need to refresh. Now, sometimes that hangs a bit, but you can see how you can use this collaboratively. Uh, it looks like I dropped out. Uh, between countries, between classes in the state or the district or the country. Lucy, you need to look in underneath your How Can You Join Your Guide. Can you see that link that I just dropped in? Click on the link underneath. Yeah, okay, so click on it in the chat and it will take you into the internet where you hopefully can find us in that uh, room. Hey, Joe, Peggy, I can only see one message from you guys. I'll drop the mic. You tell me why I can only see the one. Uh, that's because I dropped out. Sorry, so now you should be able to refresh and uh, be active again. And what I was so impressed with about that was that that means students can't continue to chat on beyond the time that the teacher wants them to because when the teacher leaves the room, then the chat is finished. I was really impressed by that. And it looks like maybe I'm the only one who has typed something there so far. Okay, so I see Lucy's joined the chat. So if you look down the bottom, there's a little send button. And next to the send button to the left is a little window for you to type in. Ah, oh, Lucy's got it. Well done. What about you, Joe? Now, Lucy and Joe, if you could very, very quickly, have you got a YouTube URL that we could drop in there? Or I'll see if I can quick find one. Because it's magic. It pulls up the little YouTube video within the chat. So the students just click on that, watch the movie. Um, if the teacher only has the right to see YouTube, I think this is one way that you could actually share it if it's blocked for students in your school. So um, if, I don't know if anyone else wants to talk about it. Joe, can you actually type in the chat? Yeah, Peggy, drop the URL to the video in the chat. So first just drop the URL. If it's YouTube, um, if it's, uh, I don't know, in the chat of the back channel, hang on, let me see. You need to grab the YouTube link, not the slide to learn one, I think. Let's see if I can drop it in. So I'm in the back channel chat. I've dropped it in there. 
No, that one you've got to click on the link. Peggy, if you can actually open up the YouTube video from that link. Ah, oh, Joe got it. There you go. Look, magic. Isn't it wonderful? Yes, that's the video that uh, Tony did for the one minute review of the day where he tells about those great apps. Okay, so you can see that Joe shared a video in the back channel. Uh, for a teacher that teaches languages other than English, I'm not sure whether you could type, I guess you can use our English keyboard to do French. If you've got a Chinese keyboard, I assume it would allow uh, Mandarin Chinese, but the teacher could type the question in the other language and get the students maybe to reply back in English and then in the other language. So I just love that one. Are there any other quick comments? Because now our time's up again. Um, anybody else got something quickly to add? And if not, we'll just wind up. Okay, well I shall keep talking then. Um, I think you'll find that you can register for that, get a free account, and you'll find that um, students certainly are engaged in the back channel. I find the quietest students in class will often be the most active when they can simply type. Students are so used to using instant messaging all the time. Uh, if you've got that back channel, you can share multimedia, all sorts of things to enrich your lesson. If the students don't want to read the article or read the novel, maybe there's a little YouTube clip on it, etc. If you're watching a movie, they could be putting their comments in the back channel, uh, things that they need to remember, their opinions of what's happening at the same time. So thank you everybody for coming. Thank you for all sharing. I think Lucy, it's been great having you with us because we love to have people that we can perhaps share some of the things that we've experimented with. I hope you found it useful. And um, I think, I didn't know what to do next time, whether we keep going with these tools for student engagement because there's so many of them, or whether we look at hashtags because I find that hashtags are becoming increasingly important all the time for me to be able to research, um, file things or find things that I want. So in the chat, if you've got an opinion which one you would like best next week, Oh, Peggy, yes, please, go ahead. Do you want to do it next time, Peggy? Oh, I can do it another time. I, I, you said to come prepared with something, and so this was something I just learned about this week, and I was really excited about it. And so I can share it another time. But it's, um, it's called Clever Le Clever Lees, C L E V E R L I Z E, and it's a brand new tool for creating um, mobile apps. And um, I went to a couple of webinar sessions that he did. He's actually a guy from Germany who um, invited us to come in and try it out. And I would love to share it with you another time. I'll put the link in the chat, though. Peggy, what about next week? Would you like to do that? I'd love you to work with my students. I have a precious year eight student who Joe, I would say are probably fairly gifted students, many of them. And I'd love you to share it with them, Peggy. You'd enjoy teaching them and I can get a room for us and all. So I'll email you about that. So if you're happy to do that next week, Peggy, that would be great. Would it take up the whole session, do you reckon? Like can we all have a go at hands on while you're sharing with us? Well, yeah, he'd be awake at this stage, wouldn't he? Right, I think I'll talk to you behind the scenes. So if it's not next week, hopefully it'll be the week after. That would be fantastic. Um, so again, thank you very much for coming. I'm not sure where you found out where this session was on, but you can find it from the blog at Tech Talk Tuesday, uh, Tuesday. Dot com. Uh, .2.bit.edu.au in our Australia series, WordPress, blog, or the guide to in, in, innovation. So thank you again for coming. Thank you for sharing those, Peggy. Oh, is that where you found me, Lucy? That's interesting. I must have advertised the session there. Oh, and it's on Facebook. So <laughs> no matter where we connect, we can find each other. But next time, Lucy, if you're interested in coming, 
try that tip talk Tuesday. So first of all, we can save the chat so that we don't lose all those wonderful links that people shared with us. So we've got people's blog site. So you go to File, Save, Chat, and then you save the chat where you would like it to go. So especially once you just get that, you go File, Save, Chat, and then you've got all those links saved. And if you've got them, you can put them in that back channel too. So Peggy, I see you just dropped YouTube in. Can you do that in that back channel? Are you still there? So drop the link in the back channel and it should become live in there. If not, I might do it before. Um, I can save the chat in that back channel. But I, ha as you saw, I have to be logged into the room for anyone else to be able to come and use the room. Or I can state that a teacher must be in the room. So Joe, Lucy, Peggy, I can make you teachers. And then you could go in and out of that chat as need be. Okay, uh, let's, uh, thank you again for coming. I'm going to stop the recording and leave the room open for another five minutes.